This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is the show where we talk to people in and around independent professional wrestling. A lot of them in the greater Pittsburgh area. A lot of them all over the place, wherever we can get them. And we got another fun one here this week. And uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and IndieWrestling.us. This and, and a lot of other content in professional wrestling. And a lot of people we talk to are actually even featured over on IndieWrestling.us as well, and our guest today is no different. You can check us out at uh, 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 on Twitter at Mayhem Show uh, and uh, US Indie Wrestling, and uh, drop us a line to Good Times at SorgatronMedia.com. A little problem with the other email address these days. In four one two two zero six WMS zero, and you can support this show and the rest of the Mayhem at uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. This week's guest is uh, uh, one I've been wanting to talk to for a while. I have a lot of fun every time I see him on the card, and it was no difference really, uh, 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 no different really uh, lately at the uh, uh, Black Diamond Wrestling Royal Eight Tournament, where he is a winner. We'll talk about that in part of this as well. But the Beast Man joins us. Who? Husk. <laughs> Husk. Studio. Husk. <laughs> joining us. Thank you so much for joining us, Beast Man. Thank you for having me tonight. <laughs> we'll talk about it, and of course, a man of many names over the years as uh, well. You know. Other things that my bone is good for is a back scratcher. So. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, yeah. So if you, if you don't, if, if you're on audio, audio, yes, he's got the big bone with him, um, ladies. Um, <laughs> uh, so, it, which I, I love this. Two weeks recording in a row, and we have like people that come in with giant props. <laughs> Who uh, who was your guest last week? Uh, David Lawless was the last recording. The, the big gavel. The big gavel oh, was with damn. us. It was amazing. I asked him where he got that from. He was like, I got it from reallybigstuff.com. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> the guys love that one. Uh, but anyways, we like to uh, you know have a little icebreaker for people uh, to get to know you. A question: What is your earliest memory of pro wrestling? Oh man. Uh, my earliest memory would have to be a video uh one of the old coliseum videos of hulk hogan i remember watching this when i was sick at my house i was like five years old and the very first match i saw was when he wrestled andre giant at wrestlemania 3 and i've been hooked ever since i thought it was the greatest thing i ever seen i've been a hulkamaniac for 31 some odd years still am to this day and i train as hard as i can i say my prayers and i do eat some vitamins so <laughs> that's awesome uh similar era uh here as well so so what you know long time wrestling fan of course you know at what point did you say hey i think i want to get in the ring and do this thing probably when i was seven <laughs> awesome so you were like when they were like everybody else wanted to be a firefighter or something you wanted to be a wrestler yep that's awesome um where did you kind of go from there to actually kind of find your way into a ring? Well, well, uh, I was 14 years old and they had the very, it's actually the very first independent show I went to. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I went to Catholic school and one of the uh, former alumni was one of the uh, promoters. Well, her quote promoters as quote, quote promoters. fingers. And like he you're, you're saying this might not have been one of the most up and up of uh, promotions as I'm sure never happens in independent professional wrestling. It was basically one and done that like back then. But, you know, to me, I'm like, oh, my God, there's wrestling in town. This is going to mm -hmm. be great. It had mm -hmm. it had Doink the Clown advertised. I want to go see him. Of course. Oh, man. <laughs> Doink gets around, doesn't he? Yeah. And uh, it was the, ver the very first show I ever went to. And. A lot of stuff happened that I actually got me to like, okay, I just, this is the path I want to take. This is where I want to go. Very first match I saw uh, had the Lord Zoltan in it. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm yeah, I'm marking out, yelling, Granny Panties, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, shout out, not great. I, I was just hooked. And then there was this one guy, like, it was like middle of the show, it was a tag match. 
And I'm into it. Like, I'm full-fledged. I'm marking out. I'm like, come on, you son of a bitch. Let's go fight me. Uh, I was just fully in. <laughs> I was enjoying myself. Mm-hmm. And this one guy named uh, Sweet Stevie Lee, uh, he passed away a few years ago. He, uh, down the mic, he's like, I'll challenge any man here. And I'm yelling at him. Like, he's like, you want some of, you want some of this, fat boy? I'm like, some yell at the whole thing. So I actually was going in the ring. Like, I slid. There in was the, no guardrails? No guardrails. Of course. I slid in the bottom rope, and he started kicking me. <laughs> and the security pulled me out, and they're like, you got to sit down, or you're out of here. I'm like, whatever. Let's go. Like, I'll feel like, like it was fun. And that, it was like, yeah, first time I went to an indie show, I jumped the ring. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> and I got to meet him, like, after the show, and I was talking to him for a second, uh, he was a really good guy, and then like the ring was still set up, and T Ranchula, who was uh, mm-hmm. it was his ring, and I asked him, "Hey, can I get in the ring?" And he's like, "Yeah, hey, why we gonna do it?" <laughs> As T would talk, and <laughs> sorry, here I'll pull this back a little bit, and I got in the ring and ran the ropes, and I'm like, "Wow, this is you know that moment in life where you feel like." this is right. Like for once, something is right in your life. You feel like it's natural. Mm -hmm. That felt natural. And I knew right then there, that's what I wanted to do. So that was your spot right there. That was, that was your, that was my moment. Your happy place. Yep. Yes. Awesome. So from there, obviously you're 14, probably not getting into training right away. Right. Well, when I, no, but I was wanting in the ring. I was wanting, I, I, you know, I was trying to do whatever I could to get ring time. Like I was going to shows early, setting Mm -hmm. the ring up um tearing down i was asking like hey what can i do to get in the business and after a while i uh, finally it was an outdoor show in Neffs, ohio where i finally took my first bump and i don't know if you guys remember brian o you guys remember him at all he's, he's kind of like around when mad mike was around <laughs> the other mad mike yeah, at the, the one of this show I think is he is he the promoter of KSWA now or but I think it's something other Bobby O or something. No, uh, Bobby O's owns KSWA. Yeah, yeah. And same last name, no relation. Yeah, no relation. <laughs> I always ask him all the time. So how's how's Brian? We're not related. It's all right. And uh, I get, he taught me how to take my first bump, and of course it sucked and I landed on my head. But after a while, you know. Uh, Felt right. And then there is a, uh, this is, I guess this is where, uh, <laughs> I guess this is where it's 15, turned 16. And there was a, sh- I was down in my house. There's an old convenience store, like right across the street from my house at the time. And there was an ad for professional wrestling at the uh, Holiday Inn in Ballast Pike, West Virginia. I thought it was the company that, like, was still running. I didn't know it was another one. So I messaged the promoter. And I'm like, hey, uh, I'm trying to get into the business. I know how to bump. I know how to run the ropes. And he uh, said, come on down and help set the ring up and we'll see what you can do. That person was Rick Diamond. <laughs> and uh, first uh, first day I met him, I like my mom took me to, she hated doing this. And she still hates me wrestling after all these years. But man, you can't, you can't like, you can't fight fate, you know? And she took me to the Holiday Inn, and as weird it just sounded, dropped me off. I met Rick for the first time. Rick looked at me. He's like, man, I thought you were going to be a lot smaller. I'm like, well, I mean, back then I was a uh, 6'2", solid 270. Mm -hmm. And I got to set the ring up, and like I took some bumps. I got... to work a little bit with Darren Smythe and them, and then Rick decided to put me in the Bow Royal that night. And I'm sitting in the back, don't know what to say, keeping my mouth shut, just letting myself go. Like, I finally met a couple people I could talk to Ryan Spade and Phil Stamper. And if you guys don't know who Phil Stamper is, it's Nate Stein. So when he was working, and they kind of, I kind of just sat with them and Breeze with them, and then in the Battle Royal, uh, it was like a Royal Rumble style. I was the first one out there, 
and it's maybe about 15 20 people but it was it felt great it was awesome i get to, i'm living my dream hey i'm a wrestler you know mm-hmm. don't know what the fuck i'm doing but i'm a wrestler so what were you were you just like uh you know guy off the street at that point did you have any any kind of persona at that point oh or was it just <laughs> Uh, Were you I, trying to be stone cold like everybody else no, at that age? <laughs> no, I was. Uh, I went by a nickname that I was in high when I played football in high school. I was known as the Night Train. The That's, Night Train. The Night Train. The Night Train. And, I, I think Rick may have mentioned this to me. Yeah, recently. And uh, I kept it as a. I just kept it like, oh, that sounds like a cool name. I'll you know, oh, Night Train, the Night Train. You know, come out to Night Train by Guns N' Roses. I had a. <laughs> I had my uh, school singlet from when I wrestled in high school. I was wearing that in my wrestling shoes. And the first person that came out <laughs> was uh, a gentleman you may know very well. His name is Jake Garrett. He was the – he came out and started beating the, the shit out of me. And little <laughs> by little, everybody else was coming out. And I got my ass whooped. And I mean whooped. Out. My chest was black and blue, red. Mm-hmm. But – and they threw me out. But you know what? It was my, it was my way of coming in, and I felt like okay, I'm part of something here. Then, after a while, I uh, went to college. Really wasn't like I didn't have no training mm-hmm. at all whatsoever. Like I wanted to wrestle. I like I, even when I was in college, I want to find like I'm looking for like places to go. Like I want to get trained. Can't find nothing. So I left. I like it got to the point like my roommate in college was also a big wrestling fan. And they did a show, and a guy from up here wanted to run a show in Glenville that knew me, and I said, I'll help advertise and do whatever. Like here, so here, so somebody track. from the Pittsburgh area wanted to run down there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, little be known, uh, the promoter, the guy that ran the show, didn't show up. So <laughs> I got left with the heat, like, but... And at the same time, I got to meet people like uh, T.J. Phillips, mm-hmm. Eric Steele, Eric Darkstorm, Cuban Assassin, Sky McKeever. Cuban he, Assassin, who who when we moved in number here, number two. Oh, number two, number two. Yeah. Not, not the original. I was going to say the original was the barber shop right next to us here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually the original Cuban Assassin. That's his kid. Oh, that's his kid. That's okay, that's his kid. Yeah, and I got to. I mean. It, it, it was a bad situation on my end later on down the road because people thought I was running the show. Like, I had this ain't me. I had nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but the one thing it was good about is like Cuban, it was his ring. They left his, he left his ring at the building. He would come pick it up later. He said we could use it anytime we want. So we, we, we were in the ring. We were doing what we, me and Justin fetal juice, uh, my buddy. Hi, Justin. Hope you're doing well, bud. He, um, we started doing, like, we were just having matches, like practice matches, doing what we knew how to do. Mm-hmm. And, like, we're like, hey, man, we can, like, charge admission. So we started, like, we charged, like, two bucks to the college kids to come in. And we maybe had, like, 30 or 40 people. But for us, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, we pay, we had enough to pay the rent, and we had enough to, like, eat, eat Pizza Hut afterwards. Because, like, you know, when you're in college, you're broke all the time. So, and uh, moved back home after a semester. Uh, gentleman... I asked the guy, another local guy, hey, could you train me? I said, yeah, I'll train you. And, like, because I was talking to him, and after a while, uh, he was telling me the wrong things mm-hmm. that I should be doing. He's like, you need to think, you need to have an ego. You need to walk around like your shit don't stink. You need to run your mouth like you're the cock of the walk or, or red rooster or whatever. And uh, that's what I did. And I'll tell you what, I have a lot of people hate me. Like, it was like a lot of people didn't like me. And that was because for one, I wasn't trained properly mm-hmm. Two, I was running my mouth thinking I was shit when I was nothing. And I was basically blackballing myself. So one day uh, I drove Rick home from a show one day and we were talking. He's like, you need to, like, you have potential to be good. You just need to like get trained properly. Like, I want to like, I don't know what, like, so we, Rick hooked it up, arranged it to where, I would be going under training with Nikita Alanoff, mm-hmm. who used to wrestle up here in Pittsburgh, who lives in Cincinnati now. And we trained, I was training at PWX originally because he was the head trainer there, but there was a big falling out between him and Jim Miller, and we didn't know where to go. So Rick set the ring up in his garage, and it was me and two other guys. We trained every Sunday for close to a year. 
in the it was in the cold when it was hot. I mean, it was it was brutal. So you got the the proper the the proper experience. Yeah. Finally, uh, after after a couple of years of trying to do this, mm-hmm. and I finally got my uh, my first match. My first official match uh, was in Middleburn, West Virginia, in two thousand six. It was a tag match, and everything will come into full circle here again. <laughs> it was me and a mask guy against Super Oprah and Chris Larusso. <laughs> <laughs> very my very first match is bulldozer, yes. and um, I said like I it was a great I had fun it was a good time mm-hmm. and I got to learn a lot and of course Super Oprah whooped my ass, <laughs> which he always does. So. Well, Super Oprah is you know is a cross dressing wrestler yep. right and, and also one of my best friends. Yes, amazing, business, it's so. awesome. And um, it's funny because after all these years, like I I first met super oprah at a when he was going by something else at mm-hmm. a uh black diamond show and i and hit this big 300 pound black man running yeah. around doing flips jumping off top like i want to be like you i want to be exactly like you he's like all right whatever big man, kid, you know. and then like we actually started getting to know each other and stuff and now it i mean 12 years later i'm not gonna lie my style is similar to his mm-hmm. and i owe a lot to jabari for for helping me you know i mean now we tag we tag a lot up in ohio and like he's one of the best matches i've ever had in recent like in the last few months at mid ohio and I, I really can't ask for a good friend you know, awesome. I, I mean that so but back to the story uh i had my first match with bulldozer uh then I I, shed the night train days night train was dead he was like, <laughs> dead buried like we we i buried his gear in the ohio river it's probably out. In the, it was bad it's and, somewhere in the gulf it's in the gulf now yeah and uh it's funny how i came up with the name with the bulldozer character is like i wanted to be like rick flair i love rick flair i wanted to be like woo i'm gonna walk around in a robe and strut and do all this stuff do the figure four and yeah that, that worked out well so rick was like you need to like have a, like, rick and the kids like you need to wear a mask to like cover yourself so all the heat you have can go away i said okay so we were co- like rick messaged me he's like what do you think about doing like a construction worker type gimmick i'll take whatever i can get so name bulldozer so we came up with the name the mask and everything and after yeah, yeah there, there he is. is there it is there, there it video. is Look at that mask! Oh my god, that's an old that's an old picture. That's like from my young. That's actually one of my first promo pictures, believe it or not. So <sighs> this is what comes up when, well, amongst other things, we're look how those. skinny I was back then too. <laughs> wow, I need to really start losing. I need to really hit the gym some more. Uh wow, that that brings back a lot of memories. But you know what, though, after a while, uh, you know, I moved away. To, I moved to Charleston. Uh, West Virginia for a couple of years, got away from here, and I got retrained a little bit. I went to Jimmy Valiant's wrestling school in Virginia with uh, Matt Connard, who's a Reaper. Yep, a Reaper, me. friend of the show. Yep, good good friend of mine as well. And uh, we we used to go down there. He he was at, he I was uh, at NWA Mountain State when he was getting his start, and he uh, we started talking. We just started riding together down there, and. Uh, yeah, it's it was always fun. <laughs> it was always a good time going down there, and I got the I that's where I learned my psychology in the business, and I really learned like I really developed I really grew as a worker down in West Virginia. Like a lot of people give West Virginia like a bad rep, and I can see why. But like, if you want to learn how to tell a story, you want to learn how to actually be a a good wrestler. Like, there's so many people in West Virginia. You, you like you got. Eric, yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, oh, we, we God. found we found some more footage. <laughs> oh my God. Oh wow. Well, that's showing. Like, this is actually kind of a funny video. Uh, there, um, you get to learn from like people that I respect very much. Eric Steele, one of my best friends. Like, I haven't seen him in a while. He left the business not like a couple years ago. He's married, has a child. He's doing good. Uh, T.J. Phillips, probably one of my like. I, one of my big mentors, you know, he's like, he's, me and him are a lot different in size and stature, but the man is one of the best technical wrestlers in the area. Eric Darkstorm, one of the best, one of the best wrestlers in West Virginia and throughout the country, bar none. 
Jason Kincaid. I you can't like Jason mm-hmm. Kincaid is West Virginia wrestling. Like he's the best when it comes to when it comes to independent wrestling. He's the best. I know he's he's gotten some spots on Ring of Honor. He does a lot of things of uh, up in Cleveland. I know with the uh, yep. premiere. I've learned. I've I've gotten. To, I was blessed to be. Uh, I got was thankful to ride with Jason some shows and got to learn from him. He. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Bulldozer versus Diablo Jr. on yeah. the video for you guys. Pat, uh, just just move on from that match. <laughs> we're, we're seeing the evolution here. Yeah, they, you know, of course. That's fine. This is a long road is what we're saying here. But look how skinny I was, man. That was good. <laughs> 20, I was thinking I was like 23 years old at the time. And... <sighs> wow. And I am... Wow, just watching old footage just made, just brings back a lot of good memories. I, mean, I got to work for I I got to, when I was down there I got to work for uh, I got to start doing weekly shows like NWA Mountain State. Uh, I was wrestling for NWA Smoky Mountain. Uh, and that's now Innovative Wrestling. I got to go out to Evansville for uh, Coliseum Championship Wrestling. I got to work a couple shots for High Valley Wrestling, which was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank my friend Tanner Reynolds for that one. So thank you, Terry. Appreciate it, buddy. I uh, I also got to be on. Hey, uh, you guys remember the promotion Awesome Wrestling Entertainment from years ago? Like I I, I remember the the letters floating around a bit. They had like a big Legends pay per view. The main event was uh, Kevin Nash and DDP against the Rock and Roll Express. Oh, geez. Yeah, I got to be a part of that. <laughs> I, that that's was, not like the ill-fated one where like Jake was drunk and everything, no, is it? No, 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 no. That was years before. No, this was a. It was a like a guy in Virginia. A guy went to Mountain State shows. New promoter hooked got me hooked up with him, and then I did a couple of shows for him. Then he went out of business. Like of course, when you have a ginormous pay per view and you lose your lose your ass, I mean, what do you expect? You know. So, but it was that was a. I got to meet a lot of great people. I got to meet one man crew who's out in Japan right now. What's up, Andy? How you doing, buddy? Just a lot, like a lot of, like, I've been, I had a good run as a bulldozer. Like, mm-hmm. I got like a really good run with him. And a lot of people don't know about my, like a lot of people up here don't know about what I've done. Yep. That's it right there. There's a little bit. We found the uh, main event. Of course, it's on YouTube of the rock and roll express against uh, Nash and DDP yep. here. So wow, that looks that looks like a nice venue and it everything. Was. Wow! I got to uh, I was I was supposed to originally wrestle short sleeve Samson on the pay per view. That was the original plan, but it got moved to uh, me being in the bunkhouse stampede. And I got a funny story about that. Uh, you know, you obviously know who George South is. Yeah. Okay. Well, George is very religious, and like I'm in the ring, like while everybody's coming out, I'm like amazed because i've never wrestled in front of a crowd this big in my entire life and i'm like god damn this is pretty cool and then all of, out of nowhere you just hear george south goes who said god damn I'm like so i hit in the corner like in between people and he's like looking i'm like i'm i'm gonna be here for i'm not going anywhere around him so like because like i've seen george beat people up before and i don't want anything to do with that uh, then I moved back to like, after two years, I moved back home to re- like, I moved back here, basically restarted and here I am today. There you go. Hey, you talk about that kind of moving from, uh, you know, bulldozer to, to beast man. Would you start as like beast beast man? Super beast. I know there's been kind of several iterations of that, right? Well, uh, I can tell you all that. Like when I first started, uh, uh, actually August of 2010, mm-hmm. TJ Phillips, uh, he ran a promotion called EWA. He's like, "Hey, I want to use you, but I don't want you to wear your mask." I said, "Well," and back then I didn't know what to say. I'm like, "Well, that's my character." He's like, "Well, I got another idea for you." Okay, so we, I go to the show. I'm wrestling Eric Steele, and he's. Uh, I want you. You're going to be known as George the Beastman Fetty. I said, "What?" He's like, yeah, that's gonna be your name. I said, okay. I mean, and actually, that night, like, that was the, uh, I think that was the night that got me over with a lot of people because I showed what I was able to do because that was the best match I had at that time with Eric Steele, and like, 
thing. It really showed what I was capable of doing. I wish I had that match can't be found anywhere because it's hidden in my house on a DVD. <laughs> but that's a match that a lot of, like if I would have a match to send to WWE, that would be it. Mm-hmm. Back in the day, <laughs> but it got me. It, it it was like okay, I got this name here, George the Beastman Fetty, whatever. I'll go with it. So after a while, I wanted to. Uh, I started like I was wrestling Jock one night up there. He's like, "You gotta be more beastly." Jock, Jock Samson. Yeah, Jock yeah. Samson. He's like, "You gotta be more beastly. You gotta have more gimmick." I'm like, "No, man. Like, I got the mask. Got that. They want me that. They want me to do this. It's like, you yeah. gotta find yourself." So I'll give Jock this. I'll give Jock credit to this. Uh, I went home and I was watching Ace Ventura when Pet Detective. Did. I was watching Ace Ventura too. Mm-hmm. And you remember the scene where he's fighting the African savage? A little the, bit, The yes. little African savage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting here like, that's it. Like, how he's, his mannerisms. Mm-hmm. And like, <laughs> like, how he was, like, the guy was, like, scared of him. Like, of, like, touch him. Like, that's it. So, I ordered a pair. Of, I ordered tights. And got. I ordered, like, a green singlet. Just because, like, okay, I'm going to wear green. Didn't really do much with my boots or anything like that. Still kept the wore black boots, knee pads. And then next show, I wrestled Jock again. And I, I, I was coming out with my black and yellow singlet, wearing a black, backwards baseball cap or whatever. And then, like, I uh, came out, had a chain. People pulled me out of the chain. And people didn't, like, was like, what the hell is he doing, you know? But after like five minutes, I got the crowd to finally like they finally realized what was going on. Like I was able to get the crowd to like interact and be able to get the character over, and that's where I guess you could say the evolution of Beastman started. Mm-hmm. And the more I was doing it, the more the more I was like, "This is me." After all, the, like after doing it for three years of. Knowing how I was doing there, I'm like, it's starting to become me. And I really, a lot of people didn't like it at first because they didn't know how to take it. Because everybody's like, oh, he's just a crazy guy. It's just Wes carrying a chain around. But once, but once like people started seeing it and started to like it, it finally was like, it started becoming more of a mainstay for me. And last year, uh, last June, uh, I put the boots away for good as bulldozer. So, mm-hmm. and I've been doing I've been doing this full t- I've been doing Beastman full time for like five years now. Jeez, and, and so the evolution, like I said, the first time I think I'd seen saw Beastman was uh, you were chasing Doctor Feelbad, and I think the announcer or something uh, up in the corner. You know, I think somebody led you out on a chain and everything. Uh, these are shots from just a few weeks ago. If you're with us at the Black Diamond, of course, uh, the the Haas tournament as we've been calling it here around the show. Thinking on bulk, nasty uh, uh, here. Bulk. So, <laughs> and it's a lot of fun too. And 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 I know, uh, in you know, from that you you're also teaming with you know uh, uh, Super Oprah, which was an interesting pairing with with it was Beast and Super Oprah. It was uh, VOW was is probably one of my f- favorite times, like getting the getting to do stuff like a lot of people around here wasn't doing, and I was. I've been it's I'm sad to see that they're not a lot around any longer and I wish they would come back. I had great memories there. I got to I think that's where I really that was the place where Bulldozer was gone for good in Pittsburgh. Cause the when we find like I was doing Beast Man for a while and like I was switching back and forth and then one and then Nino, the booker it's like we got we got to do something to where like you we kill off bulldozer for good. I'm like I'm like rip my mask off middle of the match and just like have people realize what the hell's going on. So we decide what we're gonna do. It was a, a gauntlet for their anarchy title. It was the debut of it, and it was me and Patrick Hayes, my nemesis, longtime nemesis, rival, good friend. Can't ask for a better, can't ask for a better opponent. And we just like we tore it up. He we beat the hell out of each other. He ripped that mask off, and people was like, "Wait a minute, what the hell's going on here?" And 
we it just like after the match, husk, husk, people were getting into it, and then Super Beast was a just an, a way to like up the name, mm-hmm. and it was good. Like I, it was an like upgrade kind of, and I got to do stuff with like I, I got like. I was really like when I was starting out. I really was really into the death matches, death match wrestling. I got to be able to do some stuff with IWA East Coast when they were running full time, and I was happy to do that. But like after a while, it's like, it's like not worth it to me to mm-hmm. do it. But I would do it at VOW, but it wasn't like crazy, you know. Like, yeah. it, it's not like ZZW crazy. It was like more of, uh, it was more tame, mm-hmm. and I was like it was tables. It was. Uh, like Lattice, when I had my last match with Matt Tremont, like I got to work with some great people there, uh, Super Beast, and I was happy to get to tag with Oprah. <laughs> it was a good time. I had fun. Everything, like everything there, was just great. They were a breath of fresh air when it came to Pittsburgh wrestling, and I mean a breath of fresh air. It was completely different. And just watching. Yeah, that's... it was a breath of fresh air, and you know we got to see Logan, like Logan Shulo mm-hmm. before he went there. Ryan Mitchell was there. The roster was amazing. You had Kincaid, Assad, Tremont, uh, Patrick Hayes, Super Oprah, Larusso, Remy. Like you had a stacked roster, and plus the outside talent. You had the Samantha Starr. You had mm-hmm. Samantha Heights, Derek Direction. You had a Chance Prophet. So many great talent coming in that the area was not used to seeing. Yeah. And it was a breath of fresh air. Mm-hmm. And it's what the area, and like I said, it was what the area needed. And nobody, those, when they were running in Collinsville, no one could, I, and I'll say it right now, I don't care if anybody gets mad about it or not. When they were running in Collinsville, nobody could top what they were doing. And that's with anybody on top of the card, including myself, with anybody else. And I'll say that and mean that. That they were, <laughs> they were, they were vicious outcast wrestling for a reason, and I'm was happy to be there when they were around. That's so. awesome. Well, uh, these days, uh, the Beast lives. The Beast Man, you were reunited with your T Rex at Black Diamond. That was kind of a fun, fun moment there. I heard that you didn't know that was going to happen, did you? No, it no, was. I did. The, explain, explain kind of the situation there. We'll, we'll pull up a little bit of the video here. Well, I plain and simple. But Rick's like. We're going to be prepared. Like Rick gave me a heads up. Like, be prepared. You're going to laugh. I'm like, no, no. Because no one reckon it could be something like for me, a video of me falling off the ring to mm-hmm. uh, just something crazy. I wasn't expecting a T-Rex. It did crack me up. Absolutely. Well, let's, let's take a gear over here. <laughs> so you just won the roll eight. They gave you the cup. You're celebrating. And uh, Rick comes out and says, "We would the, 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 something about reuniting you with an old friend." And then this T Rex, you know, the T Rex suit you see all, in all the memes uh, uh, around the internet. I, <laughs> I, I believe he did fight for the IWC uh, Heavyweight Championship yes, he at, at a point last year. Uh, I was rooting for him for a Rookie of the Year for IWC, um, but you guys <laughs> celebrated. <laughs> uh, so that was awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said earlier, I mean, we, we, we did reunite, but then we went out to lunch the next day and I was like, this ain't going to work out for us, man. So you had a tender moment. You had a hug. You yeah. danced, you danced in the ring. See, no one knew I could, no one knew I had moves like that. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, tell me, what are you watching these days? Is there any, anything in, in wrestling that, uh, you know, anybody you're seeing on the indies or anything you're watching on television that's kind of, uh, sticking out to you or maybe inspiring you these days? I'll be honest with you. I don't like other than Braun Strowman. Mm-hmm. There's really nothing on TV for TV wrestling. I watch anymore. I watch me like I watch maybe an hour of Raw mm-hmm. uh, on Monday, and I watch pay per views. And, and but the other stuff I watch, I don't really pay attention to other indie wrestling because I'm more worried about myself what I could do to get better. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be one of those guys like, oh, I see this cool move, I'm going to steal this from him. Like that's not what I do. Mm-hmm. And I, I like every once in a while I'll watch like a like I'll watch a botch of mania or I'll watch some uh, some old Ring of Honor or I'll watch some there's a plate like championship wrestling for Hollywood I mm-hmm. big if anything on the indies that's really it I watch like outside the area 
Uh, I'm more of a, I love old school wrestling. I am more of a uh, 1970s, 80s, all Japan, New Japan fan, uh, mid, Mid-South, Mid-Atlantic, old WWF stuff, like even mid-90s. When during like the steroid, everybody thought it was the worst time. I had so much fun watching that. Like I would say, like I, I get a lot of my influences from that era, from that from that time. Like, uh, I, my character, like Beastman, is, and I'm not afraid to say this. Beastman is kind of a resemblance to Bruiser Brody, uh, Abdullah the Butcher, Kamala, George Steele. Missy Take, Lee. Taking little bits of each, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like if you ever watch Ric Flair's inter- like shoot interview, he took a little bit of Terry Funk, took a little mm-hmm. bit of Greg Valentine, Johnny Valiant, and like Cuss, Cuss, like bite, like I bite the ropes. I got that from watching a uh, Gary Hart promo. Mm-hmm. Like with Abdullah, he was just standing there biting the ropes. I thought it was great. No one, else, no one does it, so I took it. I mean, just a lot of the old school stuff I watch, like that I watch, is how I develop like who I am, and what my style is now, and. <sighs> I am, I'm just a big, I'm like big old school fan. I was. Nice. What is the uh, best and the worst thing about indie wrestling? Best thing about indie wrestling is there is so much good. There's so much of it to where anybody can, if you go out and promote yourself, you can make a name for yourself. Like I, I'm a, I mean, I'm no one special. I'm just like everybody else that's an independent wrestling. We're all trying to make it to the big time. But, like, I feel like if you don't promote yourself, you're not going to get nowhere. You know, and, like, the good thing about it is there's so much out there. Like, there's no reason why someone can't be booked on a Saturday night. Yeah. Or a Friday or Saturday. If you, if you go out there and just, if you people go out there and just promote themselves, they'll, they, hey, you can get work every weekend. Hey, don't be afraid to drive five or six hours for fit. Like I, I'm happy enough to say now I make decent money doing this. Like I'm not making enough to quit my job, but I mean, I make enough of merchandise and want to make from shows to have a little bit on the side and be able to like take that and use it for other stuff, which is my second love. And I mean, bad, bad, just, you know, you got your, you got your people take shortcuts mm-hmm. that shouldn't be in this business. Uh, you know, I, I could have took shortcuts when I first started, which I did, but I learned the hard way and it gave people a, and a lot of people, a lot, and a lot of people nowadays, oh, he, he, oh he'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You know, and like and those people that get is the ones that hurt the other ones, you know, and there's too much of that that needs to go away. And thankfully, like over the last ten years, it's weeded down. Well, like it's gotten, it's weeded. Like a lot of that's been weeded out, and there's very little of that anymore. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's more of a good. And I would say, people just trying to like push people out of the way that don't need to. I mean, that's really it. Like I can't like, can't really say nothing. Like <laughs> I, I, I'm not, I'm not a person to say negative things. About anything, like I don't see negativity. I I'm try to keep things. Po- I try to see the positive and everything. Like like when I said a minute ago about like the people that take the shortcuts need to be weeded out, which I fully like. I can understand about someone wanting to chase their dream because I was like that. But if you're gonna do it, do it the right way. Mm-hmm. That's all I can really say. But awesome. Well, you're you're a lot of different places. Uh, this is gonna depending on where people find this. I you know. No specific days, but roundabout, like what areas and what promotions are you typically popping up in these days? Well, I uh, in Pittsburgh, I would say Fight Society. Like Fight Society is my home, mm-hmm. and I've been there for four years. From everywhere, like everything from POEX from when I started out tagging with Doe all the way where I'm at now, and. That's really where I don't see myself leaving there anytime soon. They've treated me so good over the years, and Quinn's such a has a good mind for the business, mm-hmm. and he really cares about his product, and he wants to see it succeed. And everybody in that locker room wants to see it succeed too. It's a big family there, mm-hmm. just like everywhere else. You know, I mean, there's no I'm better than you. I'm I'm better than you. I'm gonna 
you're just going to be here. No, he gives everybody a fair shot. It was which is what which I like about it, and I'm happy to be a part of that roster. I'm happy to be there. Uh, every, whenever I get an opportunity to, like the last couple of shows, I haven't been able to make because I've been out of town, other places. And but I'll be back Saturday night, and we'll get things going again. But there for you go. but for other areas, uh, you got in West Virginia, you got Black Diamond, of course, my home. That is my home. I'm there every month. Whether if I'm whether or not I'm booked on the event, I'm always there to do whatever I can to help out. Like I'm always there promoting the show, putting posters up, uh, pushing the product, selling tickets. I've been doing that since day one for that company. I'm not going to stop anytime soon. I want to see that promotion succeed. We've had that that place is that place is my home. Like we are in like the building we're at now is where I went to junior high at, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't like I that is for there's so much i can say about rick and everybody and jake for that for over the years i i'm not trying to make this i'm putting all my friends over it's not that at all whatsoever it's you guys gotta understand like i have been through a lot in this business for 12 years like i've paid my dues i have busted my ass to be able to sit on this couch after people have told me numerous times you can't do this you're never going to make it. You're too fat. You're, you have no skills. And yet the people who have been saying that are the ones that can't get booked anywhere anymore or just flat out just gave up. I didn't. I have been told ever since I was a kid, you ain't going to ever be a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> right there, buddy. <laughs> and Rick, Rick and Jake have really helped. Like Rick, Rick especially never gave up on me. Mm -hmm. He believed in me. Never he he we've had our differences over the years, but that's just how family Rick's family. Mm -hmm. Rick is my family. Like I consider him a father figure. I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Like I grew up without a dad. Rick was really the first person that actually gave me like that father I've been looking for. He cared. And like, he might sit here and watch it's like, oh whatever, Wes, but it's the <laughs> truth. Jake Jake has been he has such a great mind for the business. He is probably one of the he's the best in my opinion the best matchmaker because he can make a he can make chicken sh salad out of chicken shit and that's how good he is and he's so good at what he does and that's why i black diamond is the best in like when it comes to northern west virginia and the area no one can top our product i mean, I, I can say that about everybody but like <laughs> We like our roster is a mix of IWC, Fight Society, people from mm -hmm. Cleveland, and like we all mesh together to create a good, sh a great product for every month. Mm -hmm. And it don't matter what part of the, it doesn't matter if you're the first match or the main event, you're there. You're important to us. Every person that's on this roster is important because if it ain't for them, there's no Black Diamond. And I can tell you that right now. You, you got Keith. You got, uh, you got Keith Hot, Chess Flexer, Andrew Palace. Ty Cross, Edric Everhart, Jack Pollock, uh, Peyton Graham. You got Kalam. You got Bulk Nasty. You got <laughs> you got so many great. You got so much great. Gavin Jacobs. Uh, you got Nathan Aldridge, who is just moved here from Memphis, Tennessee, who's looking to get his shot, and he deserves it because he's that good. Mm -hmm. There's so many guys I can name right now. Darren Smythe. Who is the originator? Like Bash Bennett, Kid Cupid, Cupid of all people has been there since day one. He has the heart. He has more heart than anybody in this business, and he won't. He won't stop. He won't stop coming. And he, you know what? I'm glad he's in that locker room. I'm happy he's there. And I, no one else deserves a spot more than him anywhere. Um, but for Black Diamond, uh, Black Diamond. Then you got IWWA for the Parsons, Rock, and Adam. They run good shows. They run in Parkersburg, uh, Kingwood. They just started coming up this way a little bit, and like towards Moundsville and St. Mary's, and they have good. They have a great product. Real Shoot Wrestling and Parker and uh, Fairmont with T.J. Phillips and Tim Cross. They're they're running. They run Fairmont, Charleston. They're getting ready to run Cleveland. They're trying to make a territory again. They're running all over the wow. place. They they have a good stack. They bring people in from New York. They got Ron Mathis. They got. Bruce Gray, they got uh, myself, Johnny Blast, who who is in his fifties and can still go. 
Mm-hmm. That's a that's a dude right there that he's been around. He's been around since the late eighties, early nineties. He's a guy you can learn a lot from, mm-hmm. and <laughs> you really you can't like they they're running all over the place. And you got APWA down in the same area. Like mm-hmm. they, if it wasn't for Don, Don gave me so many great opportunities. Like he got me to I got to tag with Barbarian and. Haku against the Rock and Roll Express with Jim Cornette. That was awesome. Uh, so many, like, so many, like, places I've been over. I can name every place and every time. And, like, that's just one part. Like, yeah, then you go yeah. over to Ohio. Ohio is, like, a whole different world from here and over there. Because over there, a lot of promoters work try to work together. You know, everybody around here... You, you, they they say they try, but come on, I, I it's night and day, and no one's trying to backstab each other. No one's trying to be the best, mm-hmm. claim to be the best. We all work together. Ohio is like a whole different world, and you mm-hmm. got Mid Ohio wrestling. You got uh, Maslin and Barberton where I work for. You got that roster has Patrick Hayes, Strider, myself, Zach Hunter. Uh, Seth Allen, Ethan Wright, like Super Oprah. You got Jimmy Lee. A lot of people probably don't know around here. I'm just naming off a bunch of Ohio names. Yeah, yeah. Mega in Cleveland uh, for track for Jeff Traxler and Brandon Xavier. Great group up there in Lorraine. Then you got uh, War Wrestling in Lima. Tom Tom's been around for 15 years, and I have been trying since the first day I've gotten into this business. I've been trying to work for him. And I've been thankful and blessed to be able to get an opportunity for his company. Like last show he had about his last show was his anniversary show. He had about 1200 people there and didn't no names, no nothing. Like he has a loyal fan base and and he has people from Chicago, Detroit. I'm sorry if I'm wasting your time, bud. (laughs) (laughs) Like what's that? Yeah, oh. yeah, our audience member is leaving, so oh, like, <laughs> he's got work to go to. Oh, I understand. Oh, it's no, okay. no problem. We'll just cut it down and post. Uh, <laughs> you you got you got that, and then you have you got, and then like I got to learn from new people. Like, mm-hmm. I and and that's what's good. Like I'm getting more from like people like Cody Hawk, mm-hmm. who uh, was who trained Dean Ambrose, who runs hw who used to run the, like who used to be the trainer at hwa i get to learn from, i'm getting to learn from him uh dusty dillinger who's also a great talent he's been mm-hmm. around for a while and he's from indiana like god in the quaker city wrestling youngstown they're just starting up yeah. to do your upstart promotion so many i can mention yeah uh and then like around like like you said, I wrestled at almost every, like, literally almost every company in Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, you know, I've. And, and there's like five or six around here. So, yeah. yeah absolutely. And I try, and I try to, as much as I want to work, like, I can get work in Pittsburgh every weekend if I want. But mm-hmm. honestly, why oversaturate the market? Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's why I say, that's why I say, like, Fight Society is my home in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go, like, if. I, every once in a while, I'll go out and do like a one-off. Like mm-hmm. I'll do an RWA or I'll do an IWC. But like if you want to see Beast Man, it's going to be a fight society mm-hmm. because it's, it's. I mean, why why be like? Well, we can go see why go why go to oh if you look say you got Joe Schmo running on in Fairlawn or somewhere. And like, and then you see like Beastman's going to be here. Oh, I like Beastman. I want to go see him. You know, mm-hmm. well, we can only see him at Fight Society. You know, that's yeah, that's my like. I don't want to oversaturate myself and overkill myself because mm-hmm. I don't want to be one. Like, I want whenever I go somewhere, I want it to be special. Mm-hmm. That's really what my goal is. Like, I'm sorry. I love no, you know. no. That's great. So online, check out Beastman Husk on the Twitter and the Facebook. Right. Yep. All right. Uh, awesome. So uh, uh, thanks a lot, Beastman, Bulldozer, formerly Night Train, back in the day. <laughs> I feel like it was, it, this is the three stages of or three faces of Foley for for our yeah. Show. Marcus Man always called me the three faces of Fetty. I'm like, Jesus, man. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Uh, check him out. Like I said, look up Beastman 
I think he, it might be a bulldozer match or two over at IndieWrestling.us as oh, well. Oh, God, please yeah, delete those. Yeah. <laughs> please delete Some those. Some RWA stuff. So uh, check it out. Thank you so much for joining us. Great conversation. And, uh, of course, you can check out all the past interviews and everything over at IndieWrestling.us and WrestlingMayhemShow.com and a lot of other great wrestling stuff going on. Would you have a problem if I made a quick shout-out real quick? Give a shout. Uh, there's a couple guys that I wanted to give some props to real quick that well, actually four guys, if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, Christian Black, he uh, a lot of people have been putting him over the last few months, and he deserves every everything he's gotten over the last year. He's come along so far, and he's done so well for himself, and I'm so proud of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gannon, Duke, you two. You guys are doing great as a tag team. I just wanted to tell you that. Keep it going. Duke, anytime you want that rematch, you're more than happy to have it. <laughs> uh shout out to Zach Hunter. He's coming out, but he's starting to he's starting to Tim's get his name out there a little bit. He's doing well. And I'm happy to see he's he's starting to get out there. Um shout out to Tanner Reynolds. You're my boy. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Just wanted to tell you that. And of course. To everybody out there and everybody in Pittsburgh, in Ohio, West Virginia, Maryland, wherever, support indie wrestling. If you want to see the future, it's there. It's it's at PWX, it's at Rise, it's the Fight Society, it's a KSWA. If you want to see the future, if you want to see IWC anywhere in the area, anywhere, support indie wrestling. That's where it's at. Come see the stars of tomorrow. It's growing. And it's going to be big. It, it, we're about to hit a big boom sometime soon. And if you want to see the future, man, man, that's better than my outro. Until next time, guys, please support Indie Rest. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.